the brand new Volvo EX30 is here. They've kept the styling nice and modern, but there are still bits that you'll recognize from Volvos already on the market. This is the smallest one, and it's pure electric. None of that electrified nonsense. Volvo Car Australia is only bringing in the 69 kilowatt hour extended battery. The base model single motor is 59,990. The single motor extended ultra is 66,290. And the car we're driving today, the twin motor performance ultra is 71,290. And now the vital statistics. The base model rear wheel drive is 200 kilowatts and 343 newton meters. All models are speed limited to 180 kilometers per hour and the range is up to 540 kilometers, 520 for the model we're in, which has a 315 kilowatt, 543 newton meter output and of course a full suite of driver and safety aids. You've got a nice Volvo steering wheel and look, steering wheel buttons themselves are as yet a mystery. Oh, gear lever on the stalk, if you don't mind. We'll get on the road and then we'll have a look at the screen, which by the way is still a bit of a mystery. I'm not sure I'm terribly keen on just a centre screen, but look, we'll see. <laughs> Sorry. We'll see how that goes. Now, there's several different models. There's a rear wheel drive base model, which we're in this morning, uh, and that's the yellow car. And we've got these cars, which are the all wheel drive dual motor. That's still not very hot, cold, is it? Take the next left onto Barossa Valley Way. Eco AC, that's why. But wouldn't you think, why would you need to... Oh, go back, go back, go back, go back. Oh, I thought that was too much to ask. Oh. <laughs> I thought that was going to be really cool like um, Tesla. This main screen is your Google interface. And the Google interface is as we've shown you in other Volvos and indeed Polestars. They are from the same family. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull up here and I'm just going to... Um... Okay, we will. Are you ready? Ready. Oh. oh, well, okay, it gets along, but I mean, it didn't seem very instant talkish. There was something in here that I saw before that was something to do with talk. Right. Was there not? My co-driver is going to have a quick sticky beak. We're going to go into the settings and see if we can fettle them to get a little bit more oomph out of it. Uh, one pedal driving is on, but it's not quite as one pedal as we're used to. Okay, all right, well, we'll do that. And, um, oh no, I need to stop over here to check something. I'm just gonna stop like so. I've stopped, okay, lovely. Oh no, it's fine, I've got it. Oh, that's, that's a little bit, that's, that's a, let me just, that was an instant facelift. There's a couple of things that feel a little bit odd at first, apart from the fact that there's no driver's instruments. This does feel not like a Volvo. This feels even better than a Volvo. Uh, can you, how did you find the mirror thing? Oh, here. Uh, here. Then we go here. Left or right? Ah, oh, that one. That one? I want it. Up, down, left, and right on that side. Okay, I've discovered that you really shouldn't do this driving along. Normally, I know where the buttons are down yonder. Could you do me a favour? Like yep. That. I'm going to go... Oh, this is nerve-wracking. I'm going to go down to 60. Okay, got it. Got it? Yep. And that highlights one of the things about having a slightly test Tesla-esque approach to adjusting settings. 
you've got to do everything through this main uh, screen, including the glove box, which my co-driver will now demonstrate with this button. It's here, it's in the center. There's not one under you as well? Nope. Okay. I mean, one glove box and it's the size of a pair of gloves. Now we're doing 50. 400 meters, turn left onto Road. <laughs> she's, very, she's very insistent. So I'm just gonna change this steering wheel just a smidgy smidge. Whoever was driving this car before me was obviously extremely short. Yeah, this is, this is absolutely, the steering wheel, uh, actually, can you have a look and see what the steering set on? The other problem is when someone's looking at the uh, soft, please. Because all steering is artificial. Any car that's got electric power steering has no road feel. It is all down to the tuning um, of the tuner, <laughs> of the person that calibrated the steering and the performance and probably brakes and suspension as well. This feels very go-kartish. And again, and I can't stress this enough, the ride is brilliant. Then we get to technology and I will pick that up on the highway. Now, we've, we've changed drivers and apparently this has got, uh, how many kilometer, uh, kilowatts did you say? I don't know about kilowatts. It's on 520 kilometers of range. 520 kilometers of range and a 3.6 second zero to 100. You're not going to do 3.6 off the gravel, I hope, are you? No, I'm going up to here. Oh, so this has got 3.6 seconds, 0 to 100. Now, I don't know what that feels. What? Oh, Jesus! Okay, no, I take it back. I take it back. That does feel like 3.6 seconds to 100. So for that friend of mine who was contemplating trading a Golf R on one of these, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this will completely thrash a Golf R's pants. It'll make, it'll embarrass it. And my co-driver just commented that it doesn't feel very one pedally drivey. And that's true, and Volvo did actually mention that at lunch. Now we are in the Barossa Valley, or we're heading out of the Barossa Valley, back to Adelaide Airport. I've got to say, this is really dry. Adelaide, uh, you need to put on a bit of rain. Some wine vine things over here. What do they call them? Vineyards. Vineyards, thank you. I knew I'd come to it sooner or later. The EX30 is extremely comfortable. So apart from the ride that I've already mentioned, the seats, there's lots of recycled material in this as well. And I assume they've got the same blockchain thing that Polestar have got. We've had, if I'm honest, a little trouble fettling the settings for the first time. They're not perhaps as intuitive as I'm used to in existing Volvos. It is a Google interface, so it's the same thing and you can sign into your Google account and you can get it to do Google-esque things. But uh, considering this is the only control panel, even for, as we demonstrated, opening the glove box, I'm, I'm not convinced. I, I think I'd like at least some mirror controls Having the mirror controls in the centre screen is awful because uh, while you're doing that, you can't have, for example, the navigation up. And controls even down as far as window controls. To get to the back windows, you've got to press rear and then operate the window buttons. Well, I mean, why not just give you two extra window buttons? Because we're, we're only one button short of having a button for everything. Now you've just put on the cruise control. cruise control, thank you. And how's your cruise control? Perfect. And above the steering wheel, there's a thing that watches you to make sure that you're paying attention. And believe me, if it thinks you're not paying attention, it really gets cranky. Now, have a look up here. I can see that we're in D, that we've got the steering wheel lit, which means the steering is active. But you can also see this little graphic here that's saying that there's a truck. And beside that, you can see the rain sensing wipers are active. So we've got active lights, active wipers, 
and all of the safety and driver aids are active as well. We're down to 295 kilometres with 57% uh, of our battery used. I think that's unbelievably good value for a $78,000 on the road drive away car. So in summary, we've got the glass roof, which I'm not so fast on. The first thing I'd do is get an aftermarket protection screen for it. Frameless mirror, but no active mirror, which I think is a shame. I love the center pad. It's brilliant, but I think you at least need an auxiliary head-up display to give you some data while you're performing other functions. Because at the end of the day, you're not necessarily going to be the only person in the car. So your passenger could be doing something as uh, Max was doing, and I couldn't see where I was meant to be going. That was really annoying. Of course, you can wirelessly Apple CarPlay yourself into a frenzy. The sound, I think we decided was okay. But overall, apart from slightly limited rear leg room, and I think you'd be better off thinking of this as a coupe with two occasional seats, I can't fault this car one bit. So that is all this week from the Volvo EX30. Hit there to subscribe.